Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblum, and you're watching the Theo Not the Video for the 19th of May in 2020. We have a fall from grace. Not necessarily grace, but the upper value area extreme. That is in the S&P 500 or the S&P futures per the volume profile. Let's talk about that just quickly. To get this on your chart, we're going to take everything off the chart except for the volume profile. It is a standard setting, a standard indicator, and it's going to be volume profile. So lots and lots and lots and lots of things to look at volume. But the volume profile indicator is here. I don't really change it that much. And it's taking a look at volume at a particular price level. So I like to see this 30 minute chart with an hourly or with a 10 day look back period, which we can see right here. But well, this is mainly an intraday type of planning. That's my intraday trades. But as we've been discussing, this also sets up for swing traders or vertical spread logic or in out spread logic. You might want to take a look at the hourly chart, which doubles from 30 to 60, double from 10 to 20 right there. And it takes a little bit further perspective. Generally, you're going to get the same information and logic, except the hourly chart gives you bigger targets and bigger information. That's going to be more advantageous if you are a swing trader. Either way, we slice. And these trend lines are designed for me. I just put a trend line on there to put it in all the charts that I look at for intraday trades, meaning try to short up against this perspective or level and try to get long into it just for intraday reversals. But as a logic for spreads, which is where we are right now, this hourly or 30 minute chart works just as well. So do you think of it like a standard deviation bell curve that the middle, not the perfect standard deviation here, but still is really a, kind of the middle of the chart. And that's going to be this, the average like a magnet. And when the market gets too hot to the upside, it typically pulls back to the magnet or the midpoint or the average. But when it gets too cold to the downside, it does typically pull back the other way. All that being said, this has been really advantageous for short-term traders to trade game plans or create game plans that are bearish when you're up above the VA extreme or the yellow line and bullish when you are beneath it. That's resulted in a series of trend days to the upside, a couple of trend days back to back, shorting and going down, and a couple of trend days to the upside. Today's session was a range day and we are back at the upper edge of the value area extreme. That's here on the hourly chart and here on the 30 minute chart. However you slice it, the probability does favor a pullback retracement or sell swing against, for the moment, 2960 in the S&P futures. The same logic can be applied to the NASDAQ above. This is an advantageous short and beneath advantageous long. Pulling back to the hourly chart shows us about the same information. Although I would say the NASDAQ has a little bit of a bullish creep or bullish trend, and we can draw trend lines on that to express that. And by that logic, you'd be at the upper trend line anyway that would favor short sell positions. The Dow took a tumble today. It was down 1.5%, but the Russell will come to it in a minute. All I'm doing is, is broadening the perspective here to talk about advantageous sells or when to put put when to buy put strategies or call strategies for spreads and uh, in outs or verticals and the same type of logic is here in the russell it will work with individual stocks i won't really have a chance to go through all of them here in this video but uh, bank of america was one of the weakest stocks in today's session and plenty of other financial names were uh, weak as well this is our hourly profile again this just gives a framework like a magnet. This is a little bit better of a standard deviation curve that this is your one standard deviation, the yellow line. You can draw a trend line on that. And the red, it is called the point of control, but think of it like the magnet midpoint or the average. It's just the highest volume node or volume level at a price point. That's all the profile is. 
and you can use it many, 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 many ways. So bowing again when you're above, look to go short when you're beneath, look to go long, so on and so forth. So that's just where we are. The S&P, at least at this point, is at the upper edge of the, and coming down ultimately from this VA extreme, but it's also coming down from the weekly expected move. So just probabilistically favors the short side. If you're with us on the intraday charts or with us on a vertical swing trade or in outspread, that is going to tilt your strategies to the bear side. Now, back to the daily chart. It's the same type of logic we've been discussing. And we'll actually pull to the S&P 500. And that's our little zone. So we remain under this 200-day simple. That's mainly, we'll keep it simple here, but it's 3,000. As long as the S&P 500 stays under the 3,000 print, I would say mainly 2950, and that's a little bit above in yesterday's session, and uh, today a little bit too. That's your critical pivot. So watch this closely. The market should be seen as neutral slash bearish beneath 3,000, and I would say ultimately bearish on a break under 2,800, maybe even 2,850. But for the moment, we are in this volatility box. We can pull that back and let's maybe see the four hour chart and just sort of compare this. Actually, I'll put it to you, the one hour chart and screen that largely. And that's just kind of where the market is at the moment. So this, this chop zone, this overbought, oversold, low to high, high to low, and this volatility box range, probably ahead of some type of future breakout, but Right now, think of the same logic with the profile. We just went through on the lower frame chart. This is way outside there and the market pull back to the mean or the average, way down underneath the magnet. And now we are at the magnet. So while it does favor bear type of trades for the short term, certainly watch leading stocks, obviously financials. We can just see those. You might not be aware <laughs> despite how strong the rally was in the last couple of months, April and into May here, some of the financial stocks have not recovered. In fact, Wells Fargo just made a new low. Capital One Financial is a little off of those lows. We'll just take a look at some of the random ones that had uh, the downtrend days today, mostly. Boeing is coming off. Uh, FedEx, the little delivery. And you think that will be doing well, but it's, it's not and some other financial names such as Bank of America. And we'll take also a look at US Bank Core, just coming off of a new low. So that's the financial sector, that's your XLF. Not a lot of stocks have participated in the rally off the lows. The thing that has is the technology index. So we certainly continue watching this, but the broader picture is caution, careful, bearishness, if you will. But remember, in the last week's video, we talked about these upside hedges. And a lot of people, rightly so, think the market's going to hit this turn and go back to the lows. Certainly the fundamental data, and I would even say just logic would suggest that. But don't bet on that. Have hedges, have upside hedges, have call hedges. We kind of want those to expire worthless if we're trading calls or trying to play long in certain stocks. One of them would be NVIDIA, just made new highs. We've talked about uh, Netflix, maybe Amazon is up here as well. And again, we'll pop back to the weekly chart. Surprisingly, or maybe not so surprisingly, it depends on your perspective. Amazon just made a new 52 week high. And we have again, NVIDIA, we talk about Netflix because you know, the quarantine is lifting, which is good, but still people are staying home and watching Netflix. That's just a logical uh, outcome. And it's stock made new highs today. So these are little upside hedges if you want to balance out a net short or delta negative portfolio. You might not hope to win on these long positions, but uh, the data are overwhelming that the market does trade lower and at least come down from here. Data overwhelming, but not 
predictive and not forecastive. It'd be so great if we could just predict the future with crystal balls, but all we can do is put trades on with the probabilities and then hedge or prepare for the outcome that is not favored. And that would be a straight up short squeeze bull type of environment. Prepare for that. Plan for the downside, but prepare for something unexpected. And that would be much, much, much higher prices above 3000 As always, be careful and safe. This is Corey Rosenblum with tonight's Theo Knight video for the 19th of May, 2020.